But first up, I want to talk to you about Elon Musk, because he, this week, the Twitter owner and, of course, tech titan, he sat down with James Clayton, who's a tech reporter from BBC North America. The BBC, which the government primarily funds, of course, through a mandatory licence fee, took issue with Musk's labelling of the uh, government-funded tag that was put across Twitter. This archaic and coercive taxation method, though, in my view, that threatens imprisonment, of course, for non-compliance or non-payment, is totally absurd in today's modern broadcasting landscape. Now, despite the BBC's lofty aspirations, I've no doubt, of holding Elon accountable for his fight for free speech on the public platform, the reporter arrived at Twitter HQ in the Democrat-run, crime-ridden hellhole of San Francisco, totally unprepared to challenge the tech mogul. He failed to present evidence to support his attacks on Elon Musk, who bravely, in my view, stands up for the free speech rights of we with dissenting voices and, of course, Hillary Clinton's deplorables. The BBC's North America tech reporter, James Clayton, turned up with a load of lazy, liberal-left accusations around hateful content on Twitter. Clayton asserted that he'd seen more hateful content on his timeline. But, folks, when Musk challenged the BBC Journal for specific examples of hate that he'd seen on his feed, guess what? The journalist couldn't offer a single one, causing Musk to accuse the journalist of lying after he said he couldn't give an example because, somewhat confusingly, he hasn't used Twitter in the last month or so. Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed... You just lied. What, no, no, what I... It's incredible. I mean, you might think that he'd be embarrassed, but no, if anything, folks, he doubles down. Actually, at the time, uh, when I was thinking about it, I had tons of examples of, of hate speech that I could have given him, but I didn't want to continue to go down that path. You hear him there, oh, if only I had the, all of this bank of evidence. I mean, Clayton then sought to hide behind the think tankers and pro-censorship lobbyists like the Institute for Strategic Dialogue. Now, this institute writes reports and sends its people out to meet the likes of the BBC, sharing, of course, their worldview and that of the United Nations and the World Economic Forum and others especially when it comes to the issue of climate, in which challenging teenage truant Greta Thunberg sees you're accused of disinformation. The Institute labelled tweets criticising the WEF and the billionaire George Soros as anti-Semitic, allowing the BBC to argue that hateful speech was therefore rising on Twitter. This is a risable attack on, and frankly, the very fake news that the likes of the BBC like to wax lyrical about until the cows come home, about the dangers of day in and day out. These people want a return to the days when asserting that women aren't men would lead to an instant ban from platforms like Twitter. They want a return to the days of the de facto public square that Twitter now is, being free of those views who might as well have voted for Brexit or Trump because, folks, they view us as racist, as sexist, as transphobic, as climate deniers, any ismophobia you can think of. Instead of being pro-border controls or pro-men in society or pro-single-sex spaces, pro-science and realism when it comes to reducing carbon emissions and or so on and so forth. This BBC so-called journalist, who is less journalist and more activist, sat with Elon Musk for an hour, and not once, not one single time, did he ask about the Twitter files, complete with stories, of course, as we know now, of election fixing, of the cover-up of the Hunter Biden laptop story, and the denial of free speech amendment rights that Musk exposed upon his takeover of the platform. In my view, we must never, ever 
let anybody tell us again that the BBC doesn't have an agenda, despite, of course, being a purportedly impartial broadcaster. The next day, after the Elon interview went viral across the internet and the BBC and its activists had been thoroughly ridiculed, they published a piece seeking to support its claim of hate speech, meaning speech they don't like and views that they lament. In this piece, they sought to conflate America's free speech amendment rights with, you guessed it, Nazism. I kid you not. Straight from the lazy Gary Lineker playbook. This interview ought to serve as a potent reminder of the risks of allowing our speech to be censored in the name of misinformation, in the name of hate or whatever else they want to use to try and tape your mouth shut and remove your views from public view. Now, Twitter might not be the free speech Valhalla that many of us would like it to be. But if you ask me under Elon Musk, it's a damn sight better than it ever has been. And it's only the big tech company, the only one to be led by a man who genuinely believes what he says. I want to leave you with this quote by him himself. In it, he says, free speech is meaningless unless you allow people you don't like to say things you don't like. Now, we used to know this. We used to tolerate this. We used to accept this wholeheartedly. The BBC and others, they might want us to go back to being able to silence those that we disagree with, but I don't think we should let them. Speech and debate takes us forward. These censors want to take us backwards.